In this video, I will be discussing about disjoint sets. It is also known as union find or merge find. The topics that we are going to discuss are, we'll start with the definition of the disjoint set, then we'll discuss the union find interface. I will try to explain it using an example. Then first we'll see the simple but inefficient implementation of disjoint set. Then we'll optimize it using two techniques path compression and union by rank. Then we will use disjoint set to detect cycle in a graph. We'll code it in C++ and at the end we'll see what are the different applications where disjoint set is used. Now let's start with the definition of disjoint set. So disjoint set is a data structure that categorizes objects into different sets and gives the ability to check if two objects belong to the same set. So basically, if you are given a universe of objects and you want to categorize them into different sets such that one object can belong to only one set, then this data structure is used. It is also known as disjoint set union or DSU or union find or merge find. Now let's see what is the interface of this data structure. So the first function that we have is union set. As the word union suggests, we have to merge two sets. So the first set will be the set that contains element X and the set containing element Y. So we will merge these two sets into one set. So this is known as union set operation. Next we have is find. So in find function, we return the representative of the set that contains the element X. So if we do find function calls for two elements, let's say X1 and X2, and they both return the same value. That means both of these elements belong to the same set and the last function that we have is make set so we pass an element to make set function so it will create a new set containing only that element so these are the three functions that are required for the union find interface so now let's see an example of these three functions so the first function that we have here is make set for 0 to 9 so it will create a new set containing only these elements so it will create 10 sets Then we do union set for 2 and 1. So 2 and 1 are present in different sets. So the union will merge them into one set. So let's merge 2 and 1. And the rest of the elements will remain as such. Then we are doing a union set of 4, 3. So 4 and 3 are present in different sets. So let's unite them into one set. Then we have 8, 4. Both are present in different sets, so we'll unite them into one set. Then 9, 3, so let's merge 9 and 3. And at the last we merge 6 and 5. So at the end we are left with these four sets. Now if someone asks, are 8 and 4 connected? How we can check this is, so we can simply do find 8 and find 4. If these both return the same representative then we can say yes they are connected or they are in the same set. But if these return a different set then we can say no they are not present in the same set. Let's say someone asks if 0 and 7 are connected. 0 is present in a different set and 7 is present in a different set. So these are not connected. So that is how you can use these three functions to check whether the elements are present in the same set or they are connected. So now let's see a simple implementation of union find. So first step is we keep a parent array. So here we'll be storing the parent of all the nodes. So parent can also be thought of as representative. Here the first step was make set where we created set for all the nodes. So in the make set function call, we'll initialize the parent array. So now each node will be parent of itself. Next comes find function call. We check if the node is parent of itself or not. If it is not, we do a recursive call, find its parent. So when we reach the root of the tree where the node is parent of itself, then we return that node. And at the last we have union set function. So let's say we pass two values x and y. 
we first find representative of both the elements we have found root x and root y if both are equal means they are already present in the same set if they are not equal we make y as the parent of x let's again come to this example and try to understand this pseudo code so first we have all the nodes so the make set function call where each node is the parent of itself then we do union set of 2 comma 1 let's create two node here and delete this so it means one is parent of two then we have union set 4 comma 3 so what we're doing is we are setting the later node to be the parent of the former node we'll set 3 to be parent of 4 then we have union set 8 comma 4 so 8 is child of 4 then we have union set 9 comma 3 then we have union set 6 comma 5 so 6 is parent of 5 so now you can see the different sets that we have. So the first set will have element 0, next we'll have 2 comma 1, then we have 8, 4, 9, 3 like we've shown here, then we have 6 and 5 and at the last we have 7. So if we again see the example, we have to find whether 8 and 4 are connected. We call find 8 and find 4. So when we call find 8 function, we come here, we check whether 8 is parent of itself. So 8 is not parent of itself, we call parent of 8. So parent of 8 is 4, we recursively call find for 4. So find for 4, 4 is not parent of itself, so it will come here, it will give us 3. And 3 is parent of itself, so find of 8 will give us 3. And if we do find of 4, it will also give us 3. So now we can simply say 8 and 4 are connected. And if we do it for 0 and 7, so find of 0 will give us 0 and find of 7 will give us 7. So these are not same, so we can say these are not connected. So this is how we can do the simple implementation of union find. So if you look carefully, there is one major issue here. The issue is that this tree height can be very large because we are not rearranging the tree height at any step. It is very common to have a tree which will be a very large height. So in that the find operation will be too expensive. So we can have a scenario in which the find operation is taking order of n which will be the height of the tree if all the elements are in one line. So to optimize this we have two techniques available by which we can bring down the complexity to almost constant. So let's see what are those optimizations. So the first optimization that we have is path compression and the second optimization that we have is union by rank. So the path compression is done when we are doing a find operation and union by rank is done when we are doing a union operation. So both of these operations manipulate the height of the tree. So at the end the complexity will be almost constant which will be order of alpha n. So alpha n is the inverse Ockerman function here. So which grows very slowly. For all the real life cases it won't be greater than 4. So from order of n by doing these two optimization we can reach order of alpha n which is almost constant. So let's see one by one what are these optimization. We'll start with the path compression. So in path compression we flatten the structure of the tree whenever the find operation is used on it. So the optimization is only of one line. So if we are doing find for a particular node and that node is not the parent of itself so it means we have to go to the parent and do a recursion function call. So at each step we are setting the ancestors also to its correct parents. So as the stack is unwinding we are setting the parent of each of the nodes that are above this. So at the end we'll have a very balanced structure of the tree because all the ancestors we have already modified with the correct parent. So let's say we have this tree and we're doing a find call for node 5. So when we're doing find call for 5, we check that 5 is not equal to parent of 5. So parent of 5 is 3. So we call find for 3 and we'll set parent of 3 here also. We check for 3 whether 3 is parent of itself. So 3 is not parent of itself, we'll call find of 2. We'll check whether 2 is parent of itself, 2 is not parent of itself, so we'll call find of 1. 
and for one is not parent of itself we'll call find of zero now zero is parent of itself so this will return zero so at this step we'll set parent of one to zero we'll return from here we'll set parent of two also to zero here also we'll set parent of three also to zero and here we'll return zero so the tree structure that we'll get eventually is so by doing one function call we have set parent of four nodes five three two and one so this is what we mean by path compression so whenever we do a find operation we flatten the structure of the tree so if the height of the tree is less then the find function will be more efficient in the future so this is the first optimization that we have now let's have a look at the second optimization of union find so it is known as union by rank so here we attach the shorter tree to root of the taller tree so to achieve that for each node we keep a variable rank so initially rank is 0 for all of the nodes and whenever we do a union operation we increment this rank so let's see how we increment this rank so when we're doing a union operation for two elements x and y we find root of both the elements if they are equal it means they both belong to the same set otherwise whichever node has the higher rank that becomes the parent so here rank of root x is higher so root x becomes the parent otherwise root y becomes the parent so when rank is equal the later node becomes the parent and we increment the rank of the later node so we have done here rank of root y plus plus so let's see an example of this union operation so we have these 10 elements so all are individual sets initially so parent of each element is itself and rank of each of the elements is zero initially so first we do a union operation on j and i so both j and i are parents of itself and the rank of both are zero so when rank is zero the later becomes the parent so i will become the parent and j will become the child and rank of i will be one then we do union of e and i so e has a rank of zero and i has a rank of one i becomes the parent and e becomes the child Similarly for D and I, D has a rank of 0, I has a rank of 1, D becomes the child. Then we come here, A comma H. So both A and H have a rank of 0, H becomes the parent and A becomes the child. And we increment rank of H to 1. Then C comma H. Now C has a rank of 0 and H has a rank of 1. C becomes the child of H. Then comes G comma F. So both have 0 rank, so F becomes the parent and g becomes the child for b comma f b becomes the child and f becomes the parent then we do union of g and a so root of g is f and root of a is h so both have a rank of one so whenever the rank is same the later becomes the parent so here h will become the parent and rank of h will be incremented by one so rank of h will be two now we do union of d comma f so f is here and d is here so if we check root of d it is i and root of f is h i has a rank of one and h has a rank of two so h has a higher rank so i becomes child of h so this whole tree will become a child of h so it will come here like this So in this way union by rank works, we just check whichever node has the higher rank that will become the parent. And if the rank is same, the letter becomes the parent and we increment its rank by 1. There is one more approach for optimizing this that is called union by weight. So in that method we check how many nodes are present in a subtree. But that has its limitations because whenever we do a find operation, we adjust the nodes. So count will keep on changing whenever we do a find operation. So that is why union by rank is more preferred. So now let's see how we can use this union find to detect a cycle in a graph. So we are given this graph and we have to find whether a cycle is present in this graph or not. So the algorithm is quite simple. So the first step is we create set for each of the nodes that are present in the graph. So the sets that are present are so initially all of these sets have a parent which is itself and the rank is zero. Then for each of the edges in the graph, we do a find operation for both the vertices. So let's say we start with this. We do find zero. So find zero 
returns the parent of 0 so which is 0 and then we do find 1 find 1 returns the parent of 1 which is 1 so because it is not same so then we do a union so we do union of 0 and 1 so because rank for both 0 and 1 is 0 so 1 becomes a parent and 0 becomes a child so rank of 1 becomes 1 and these are the ranks for all then we pick this edge 0 comma 2 we do find for 0 it returns 1 because now 1 is the parent of 0 and then we do find of 2 find of 2 returns 2 so these both are different so we do a union operation on them so we do union of 0 and 2 so parent of 0 is 1 1 has a rank of 1 which is higher so 2 becomes a child then we pick this edge 1 and 3 so we do a find operation on 1 which returns 1 because 1 is the parent and then we do a find operation on 3 which returns 3 so both are different then we do a union of 1 and 3 1 has a rank of 1 and 3 has a rank of 0 so 3 becomes child of 1 then we pick this 2 comma 3 we do find of 2 which returns 1 and we do find of 3 which also returns 1 so now both find 2 and find 3 returns 1 so they belong to the same set so that means there is a cycle in the graph so as you can see in the point 3 a find operation on both the vertices returns the same parent then cycle is detected so it means from the edge 2 and 3 we are getting a cycle so we can see here there is a cycle so now let's have a look how we can implement this in C++ all the code that I am showing is available in my github repository link is present here and as well as in the description so now let's have a look at the code so I have used the same example that I have just described I have created a graph here of 6 vertices and I have created a vector of all edges in which I am saving the pair of all the edges so I have initialized the graph and all edges in this function add edge so it means there is an edge from 0 to 1 0 to 2 1 to 3 and in this add edge function I add all the edges by making a pair so after the all edges is initialized I pass it to the function is cycle present so in this function I have created two vectors parent and rank I have initialized rank to 0 and passed parent to make set function so in the make set function I am setting parent of each node to itself so after this I am parsing the all edges array and I am finding the parent for both ends of the edge so first I am finding the parent for the x node and then I am finding the parent for y so in this find function I do a simple recursive call to check the topmost level of the parent so when parent becomes equal to the node that means it is the topmost node then I return that so once I have parent for both vertices of the edge if they are equal it means there is a cycle present in the graph and if they are not equal I do a union on them so I call this union set function in union set function I find both root x and root y and whichever node is smaller I make it the parent we just have to iterate for all the edges in the graph and if at any point if both vertices belong to the same set then we can say there is a cycle in the graph and at the end I am just printing whether a cycle is present in the graph or not so I am printing 0 and 1 so let's see what will be the output of this function so the output is 1 so that means the cycle is present in the graph so we have seen that detecting cycle in a graph is an application of the union find data structure so there are many other applications that we can think of so as we have seen that it is used to find the connected components we can make different sets and check which are the nodes are connected or not we can detect cycle in an undirected graph we can check the network connectivity because that will also depend on the number of connected components that are present so if you have to color all the connected components to one color then this data structure can be used so this is used in ms paint and other image editing softwares so in kruskal's minimum spanning tree algorithm union find is also used to find the connected components so we can see that there are a lot of applications for the union find algorithm so that's it for this video 
If you have any doubts or suggestions, please leave them in the comment box below. If you like my content, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. And until next time, this is Sandeep Thapar, signing off.